The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. As we come to the first choral leaving song on a Sunday since lockdown, we continue to pray for the life and witness of this holy place and to welcome all who are joining us online. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open
Here beginneth the 23rd verse of the 33rd chapter of the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Mortal, your people who talk together about you by the walls and at the doors of the houses say to one another, each to a neighbor, come and hear what the word is that comes from the Lord. They come to you as people come and they sit before you as my people and they hear your words, but they will not obey them. For flattery is on their lips, but their heart is set on their gain. To them you are like a singer of love songs, one who has a beautiful voice and plays well on an instrument. They hear what you say, but they will not do it. When this comes, and come it will, then they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord came to me. Mortal, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, to the shepherds, Thus says the Lord God, I, you shepherds of Israel, who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. You have not strengthened the weak, You have not healed the sick. You have not bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strayed. You have not sought the lost. But with force and harshness you have ruled them. So they were scattered, because there was no shepherd. And scattered they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep were scattered. They wandered over all the mountains on every high hill. 
My sheep were scattered over all the face of the earth, with no one to search or seek for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, says the Lord God, because my sheep have become a prey and my sheep have become food for all the wild animals, since there was no shepherd, and because my shepherds have not searched for my sheep, but the shepherds have fed themselves and have not fed my sheep. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, I am against the shepherds, and I will demand my sheep at their hand and put a stop to their feeding the sheep. No longer shall the shepherds feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths so that they may not be food for them. Here endeth the first lesson.
Here beginneth the 26th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Agrippa said to Paul, You have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and began to defend himself. I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things against the name of Jesus of Nazareth, and that is what I did in Jerusalem, with authority received from the chief priests. I not only locked up many of the saints in prison, but I also cast my vote against them when they were being condemned to death. By punishing them often in all the synagogues, I tried to force them to blaspheme. And since I was so furiously enraged at them, I pursued them even to foreign cities. With this in mind, I was traveling to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. When at midday along the road, Your Excellency, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and my companions. When we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It hurts you to kick against the goads. I asked, Who are you, Lord? The Lord answered, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you to serve and testify to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which I will appear to you. I will rescue you from your people and from the Gentiles, to whom I am sending you, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. After that, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and throughout the countryside of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do deeds consistent with repentance. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. To this day I have had help from God, and so I stand here testifying to both small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would take place, that the Messiah must suffer, and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. While he was making this defense, Festus exclaimed, You are out of your mind, Paul. Too much learning is driving you insane. But Paul said, I am not out of my mind, most excellent Festus, but I am speaking the sober truth. Here endeth the second lesson.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. United in the company of all the faithful and looking for the coming of the kingdom, we offer our prayers to God, the source of all life and holiness. Merciful Lord, strengthen all Christian people by your Holy Spirit, that we may live as a royal priesthood and a holy nation, to the praise of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy. Bless Paul, our Bishop, and all ministers of your Church. We pray that by faithful proclamation of your word and the celebration of your command of your sacraments, we may be built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets into a holy temple in the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. As we reflect on our Old Testament reading this afternoon, we pray that all who are called to lead, either in church or state, may do so in a way that reflects the feeding of the sheep by the shepherds demanded in Ezekiel's vision. We pray that all who are called to lead and all the Christian community may strengthen the weak, heal the sick, bind up the injured, bring back the strayed, seek out the lost, Lord, in your mercy. As we hear of Paul's trial before Agrippa and his confession that he has done wrong in the past only to be forgiven and commissioned to be the apostle to the Jews and Gentiles of his day, We pray for all who are called to serve, for all who are called to make sacrifices so that others may benefit. We pray for all this day who give themselves to the service of the poor, the anxious and the needy, not least in these pandemic times. We pray for all who minister to the sick and dying and all who bring light to those in darkness. Lord, in your mercy. Remember, O Lord, in your mercy, all those who have gone before us, who have been well-pleasing to you from eternity. We take comfort in the words of our anthem this evening from the Book of Wisdom. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the whole company of your saints in glory for your servants, St. Finbar and St. Matthew, whose feast day occurs tomorrow, and with whom in fellowship we join our prayers and praises. We pray that by your grace that we may, like them, be made perfect in your love. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.